five simple jobs to play, one for each role, for when you want to play but don't want to think too hard to play well. Now, just to be clear, a job being simple to play does not mean that the job isn't powerful or that it doesn't have a lot of special optimizations that you can do to make it more complex. It just means that the job's general gameplay is extremely straightforward and not too difficult to perform. And remember that whether these jobs are actually really simple is mostly my opinion of course and each player finds different things difficult. Now, the jobs in question are Warrior, Sage, Summoner, Dancer and Reaper. All these jobs have the property in common that the most intuitive opener you could come up with naturally tends to be extremely close to what is actually the optimal opener. So, when you can't really be bothered with this sort of hyper-optimization, you still automatically get really close simply because the job itself is that straightforward to play. Another property they have in common is that their burst every two minutes also comes very naturally, relying on a couple of cooldowns and then pressing whatever lights up. Now, this one is of course a bit more questionable, since you can argue for every single one of the jobs that Oh, but you could stockpile this resource or save this cooldown and this and that. And that is also very correct, but the fact that these jobs can fill out the majority of a 15 second burst window with the bare minimum speaks a lot to their simplicity. Now, let's get a little bit more specific. I will go over the intuitive opener for each of the jobs and briefly explain how it differs from the optimal opener. And after that, explain the general game plan for the job, highlighting things you can do to optimize when you want to do a little extra. And if you are in the mood to relax, you're probably more likely to want to play DPS over tank or healer, so let's start with the DPS jobs. Summoner, in my opinion, is the simplest job to play in the game, due to its rotation being almost perfectly on rails. While you have the ability to make choices in which order you summon primals, it is very normal to fall into just doing Titan, Garuda, Ifrit every time, regardless of circumstances, especially if you're autopiloting a bit, which is totally fine. The intuitive opener of the summoner is simply to cast Ruin and summon Bahamut directly into Searing Light, followed by mashing out all the buttons that light up. And the click everything that lights up strategy can actually carry you all the way to Phoenix, aside from a single ruin cast at the end. The only optimizations the summoner can really do involves delaying things like energy drain, enkindle, death flare and fester to after the rest of your raid has put up their cooldowns. Specifically late weaving searing light in your opener and of course planning your primal summons around your raid composition. You can also go out of your way to cast Phoenix's Rekindle on the tank or someone that needs it and instead of mashing out the Festers immediately after you get them during Phoenix, saving them for Bahamut and Searing Light is also a minor optimization. But you can probably agree that most of the summoner rotation is entirely intuitive with the only big decision being which order you summon the primals, which tends to standardize into Titan, Garuda, Ifrit. Next up are our friendly neighborhood edgelords, the Reapers. So so, always remember to prepare that before combat. And then whether there is time to use harp or not dictates whether you use it or not. And then the intuitive rotation of course starts naturally with applying your damage buff death's design, followed by weaving arcane circle. Then get soul slice on cooldown, spend the gluttony, gibbet and gallows and then the plentiful harvest into enshroud. The entirety of the simple reaper rotation boils down to keeping up your debuff, spending your cooldowns as they come up and making sure you aren't in enshroud when something like gluttony becomes ready. But beyond that, you can enshroud pretty much whenever it is available. The fact that the reaper's combo sequence doesn't have any big payoff besides damage also really makes it the best example of a waiting attack sequence that you use only when nothing else is really necessary. Now, the optimization in just the opener for those that want to both includes two different openers where one is closer to the intuitive one, making sure to put everything on cooldown before you use Enshroud, while the other prioritizes getting Enshroud out as quickly as possible, skipping Gluttony. Every two minutes, when Arcane Circle comes up, the intuitive style can choose to Enshroud if you have the resources to do so and then Arcane Circle at some point during it and go from there. 
while the optimizers might instead plan a double enshroud ensuring two communios in the arcane circle and raid buffs. The impact this kind of optimization has is of course extremely dependent on how many raid buffs get aligned in the content you happen to be in. Now before I drown myself too deeply in the nerdy Reaper stuff, while it is super fascinating, we need to move on to the next job, Dancer. Now here the intuitive thing varies a bit. To some players, the logical move is to prep the longer technical step before the tank pulls, while for others, the standard step is the better thing to prep. I am going to assume we start with standard step simply because that's what I do. Which of course means that the intuitive opener becomes standard into technical step. Right after the technical finish, weave devilment and then we just roll through all the buttons that light up. In terms of optimizations, the main thing is that you can prep standard step up to 15 seconds before the pull begins. And if you want to be extremely prepared, you can do standard step, cast the finish and then wait for the cooldown and prep it again to have the buff for the standard finish. This particular over preparation can be funny to do when zoning into dungeons or raids when they are first timers watching the cutscene, but it is extremely unnecessary, even in savage content. Now, aside from the precast of standard step, the main optimization in the opener is in the order of all the buttons that light up. And aside from this, the big thing to optimize around is saving your fourfold feathers and esprit gauge for the big bursts every two minutes and only spending the excess in between. Generally, the fact that the dancer's rotation is centered around standard steps and just reacting to procs outside of the two minute bursts makes it very simple to pilot. And even in the two minute bursts, it is less extreme compared to both Bard and Machinist. Admittedly, I do believe dancer might be the most complex of the five simple jobs. Now with the DPS jobs out of the way, let's move on to Warrior, covering the simple tank. The intuitive opener is of course to get your damage buff up as fast as possible. For some players, the slightly less intuitive part is that you do delay your ability attacks upheaval and onslaught, but you don't delay infuriate, since you can activate that in advance to get the cooldown rolling. Even less intuitive is that you can activate inner release in advance too. As long as you have 3 GCDs of time to spend the fell cleaves, it's all good. But you don't have to do most of these things, with all of these things I just mentioned being included in the optimized opener. In terms of optimizing the rotation, you can stockpile beast gauge for bursts and delay the use of infuriate for the same reason. But because of how much gauge you generate and how using fell cleave pushes the infuriate cooldown, it is often difficult to force more than just one infuriate into the two minute burst anyway. In terms of defensives, aside from figuring out how many defensive tools you need for a specific pull or tank buster, knowing the optimal times to use blood wedding and nascent flash is possibly one of the harder aspects of warrior. But in most content, just pressing blood wedding when it is available and trying a little bit to late weave it is just fine. Leading us to the big finale with Sage. Now you might be scratching your head thinking that there is no such thing as a simple healer. You never know when you need to really perform as a healer, and you'd be right. However, for most content, Sage can get away with some very straightforward strategies. For the damage part, keeping your dot up at all times, getting as many casts of doses out as you can, and then planning when to use Flemma is really where all the effort goes. In regards to Flemma, delaying your initial Flemmas until after raid cooldowns have been activated is the main optimization, and stockpiling Flemmas to the best of your ability to fit one or two in cooldowns every two minutes. But alternatively, you can also just use Flemmas as a reliable option to attack when you have to move, since Toxicon can be unavailable. For healing, while using your cooldowns in response to things is the optimal way to act, certain options in the Sage's toolkit are just so powerful that using them whenever they are available can be a genuine strategy on its own. Take note that this mainly only works in non-savage content. To be specific, using Caracol on cooldown can be extremely effective even if you're just healing and protecting the tank. Assuming you use Rizomata on cooldown, this alone will spend 6 of the 11 Adderskull you get over 3 minutes, leaving the remaining 5 primarily for use on Tarukol, Ixacol, or in a pinch, Druokol. 
You can expect to use Taurukul more in dungeons for trash pulls and Ixacol more in raids for raid-wide attacks. Due to how raids can be a bit less predictable, using Karakul on cooldown and then adding anything else when you need it can be good as a starting point. For dungeons, here's my advice for trivializing most trash packs, which tends to work with most tanks. As the tank reaches a standstill after pulling however much they want, Karakul and Haima or Panheimer. You will need one for each trash pool, then, as Karakul is about to run out, use Physis and either use Tarakul the second Karakul ends, or wait until the tank needs the healing, and then, once the damage reduction from Tarakul ends, back to Karakul. And if that Karakul runs out, you can use Holos to keep up the damage reduction further. If Tarakul never becomes necessary, you can also skip over to Karakul again. This leaves Soteria, Neuma and Zoe, Krasis and resources for Druacol and even the option to use Diagnosis or Eucrasian Diagnosis if your tank really needs it. But this general game plan works for 90% of the tanks I get paired with and those last percent tends to just need Soteria and maybe a Druacol in most cases. Remember to beat the ever-living daylights out of that Discrasia button while you do the healing. Your damage is a crucial piece of the puzzle to make those cooldowns last just long enough to defeat the pack before you need to get creative. And those were the simplest jobs in Final Fantasy XIV to play effectively at max level, in my opinion. Thank you so much for watching. If you found it interesting, funny or fascinating, please consider leaving a like. You can also subscribe and bonk the bell to get notified when next I post a video. Make sure to let me know in the comments your favorite job to play when you just want to turn your brain off. My favorite is Warrior. Fun fact, a lot of jobs could feasibly be considered extremely simple to play. Even something like Samurai you could just mash all your cooldowns whenever and call it a day. But having a job that intuitively lines up most of its burst every two minutes, naturally, without trying very hard, is a significant property, as raid cooldowns stack together to become very powerful in combination. For example, with a team including an Astrologian, Bard, Red Mage and Ninja, leaving slots open to be whatever you want to be, the raid-wide cooldowns these jobs can provide every two minutes combine to approximately 25% more damage output in the burst. So simply having your burst there naturally without trying matters a lot.